Man, sure is good to be in God's house with each one of you today to honor and glorify the Lord. And uh, I'm always excited for an opportunity to come, amen, and be in Arizona, because I'm a native son of Arizona around here, and I just feel right, right at home. Good to be up in Prescott, amen, in these mountains, and enjoy the uh, beautiful creation of God, but above that, it's good to be around here and see good, godly-looking people that love God. Amen. Young men and young ladies that are here, I was reminiscing on the way coming here. I thought, you know, my father had uh, four boys and four girls, and I remember us uh, coming up to Prescott, and uh, them four girls were all older than me. So at one time, they were all uh, in the dating scene, and uh, they were, of course, as young ladies, uh, they were interested in the young men. And so they would come up to the mountains up here in Prescott to camps and activities that were there. And uh, my dad, he wasn't any different than what some of the other dads must be around here. I looked at the modesty of some of these young ladies and I thought, thank God, a whole generation later, somebody's still teaching it. Amen. Am I... That's right. My dad would tell my four sisters, amen, he would say, you know what, amen, if it's not for sale, and if you're not giving it away, you need to cover it up. Wasn't that good advice? Amen. I'm glad to see Pentecostal young ladies that it's still not for sale. They're still not giving it away. Amen. They're dressed right, young men that are looking right, and I'm just excited to be with you here, and uh, I'm asking God to do some things through me to be a blessing unto you. I enjoyed Brother Howard's preaching last night so much. It blessed my heart. I believe it blessed each one of you that were here. Amen. And let's just see what God can do. I want to be a blessing to each one of these young people that are here. Amen. They've come to camp with needs of their own. And they need to be reached. Somebody needs to help them. The mamas, the daddies, the great grandmas that are here. Amen. We want to try to help you today. Thank you for this privilege of being here. Would you stand with me? I am reading to you from the book of Second Timothy, chapter number 3. If you will... Follow along in your Bible, 2 Timothy chapter number 3, very familiar scripture text, and let's begin, first of all, at the first of that chapter, first five verses, and then we'll skip down from there. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 1, it said, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And I want to, with the help of God, talk to you on this subject, standing up to the seduction of the last days, standing up to the seduction of the last days. You said, well, I've seen it really bad. Well, the Bible said it's going to get worse and worse. Say, well, I've already learned how to stand up to it, preacher. I don't need another sermon. You will six months from now. 
because it's going to be worse than it is tonight. Amen. A year from now, going to be worse next year at this camp. Amen. It's going to have happened a lot worse than what it is if the Lord tarries. Amen. And we need the help of the Word of God. Lift your voice and ask God to talk to you today. Mighty God, we love you. We glorify you. We praise you. We thank you. Blessed be your holy name, God. In the holy name of Jesus, I'm asking you, God, for your help and your guidance, God. Anoint, anoint me, Lord. Let me be a blessing, God, to these people. Oh, God, from the youngest, Lord, to the eldest, let the Word of God bring strength and benefit. Oh, mighty God, I believe you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you, and you may be seated. Amen. Seduction is a a very, very tricky thing that most of us don't uh, take enough time to really analyze it and how it influences all of us. The truth of the matter is that seduction feels good while it is happening. It's not something that gives you this feeling and this uh, this bad sense and, uh, and an attitude that said, ooh, I don't like what is going on right now. Seduction is exactly the opposite of that. The Bible proves it to us and said that stolen waters are sweet. It feels good while you're drinking it. It feels good while you are partaking of it. The Bible said that bread that is eaten in secret is sweet. And it is only afterwards that it becomes gravel in your mouth. It's only the aftertaste that allows you to catch on to say what I just did wasn't really good for me. What I just did really isn't something that's enjoyable crunching on that gravel that is inside of my mouth. The seducing spirits that we are facing today, they affect the entire spectrum of our lives. Not just one area, but all areas of them. I listened to a friend tell of a preacher friend of his that was alone in a motel. And inside of that motel room uh, that there was a presence, a spirit that came to him. While he was alone in the room, he had come there, shut himself away for some days of prayer and of fasting. And as he was alone praying inside of the motel room, said a presence came to him as if it were an angelic visitation that came. And there that spirit began to offer him some spiritual gifts and began to tell him that this is what you have been searching for. This is what you've been praying for. This is what you've been longing for. Here are the spiritual gifts uh, that dynamically God wants to use you in your ministry and bless you with. And said as he was about to reach out and receive them in a thankful heart, in a thankful attitude, that he looked at and saw his own reflection in the mirror and couldn't tell what had been transformed as an angel of light uh, was really a seducing spirit from the devil. But he saw this reflection uh, of his own countenance uh, with a perplexed look upon his face uh, and realized uh, that this isn't a God after all. This is a seducing spirit uh, and began to call upon the name of Jesus uh, and ask for strength and help to resist even uh, the subtle packages of the enemy. Uh, I'm telling you, friend, we are living uh, in the last days. 
We are living in the time uh, where seducing spirits uh, are working in a fashion and in a way uh, like we have never known before uh, in any of our Christian journey. Uh, you say, well, I'm an old timer. I've been around a long time. Uh, you must not believe this Bible then uh, if you think you've seen it all. Uh, because the Bible said the seducing spirits uh, are going to get worse. Worse and worse and worse. No matter how long you've been on the journey, they're there actively working on you and on me. Amen. I want to just present to you a few things here today. First of all, if you're going to stand up to the seduction of the last days, you need to be aware that your emotions cannot be trusted when the enemy is trying to seduce you. Your emotions uh, absolutely cannot be trusted. Uh, why is that? Well, look at the story of the serpent in the Garden of Eden. The Bible names him uh, that he was subtle, the Bible said. Uh, and that subtility, uh, if you'll define uh, and look it up, it means so slight, elusive, not immediately obvious, uh, beyond the understanding of the average person. Uh, when the devil comes with seducing spirits, uh, it is very subtle. Uh, it is not something that you can see and grasp uh, and understand with your emotions. Uh, why? Because emotions, all of us have them, uh, but they can make us unstable, irrational, uh, vulnerable. Uh, our emotions are just that way. You say, not mine. No, 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 not mine. Oh, yeah. People out in the world, amen. They go to see a friend of theirs and brother, if there is a soap opera that is on. Uh-huh. A soap opera... That is all make-believe characters. All make-believe events. Every, every part, there ain't an ounce of truth to it. But millions of women all across America have got a Kleenex box next to them uh, when it gets to that part uh, of the soap opera. He said, oh, I'd never be that dumb. Uh, well, thank God you got enough sense not to have a television down. But I've watched. Oh, yeah. But I have watched. Uh, amen. Good Pentecostal girls read fictional novels and do the same thing. And do exactly the same. <laughs> Amen. I've laid in bed with my wife before. Uh, amen. And felt the bed shaking and sobbing. And I looked over there at her. Uh, and I said, everything all right, honey? Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. I'll be past this part of the story in just a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah. Your emotions cannot be trusted, my friend. Uh, they will cry over things that aren't even real uh, and laugh over things they ought to be crying over. Uh, your emotions cannot be trusted. Uh, mine cannot be trusted. Uh, hallelujah. And if we're going to stand up uh, to the seduction of this last day, uh, we have to say, devil, I don't care what I feel like. Uh, I don't care what my emotions are saying to me. Uh, I'm built upon the Word of God. Uh, it is rock solid. It does not fluctuate nor change with my feelings. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible said that in that garden scene, the enemy was active trying to entice. That word entice means to catch by bait. You ever go out fishing? Amen. You don't usually do good without nothing on the hook, do you? Amen. But you hang that big old juicy worm on there. Uh -huh. 
Amen. Let me tell you, young people, something. Uh, the devil's trolling past you in his glass bottom boat. Uh, amen. And he's got all of the bait hanging on the hook down there. He's doing his best to entice you. Uh, he's doing everything in his power to say, looky here, watch this wiggle and shake over here. Uh, amen. Catch your eye and your glimmer uh, to what's going on. Uh, that's all the part of the enticement of the enemy, uh, trying his very best uh, with seducing spirits uh, in this last day. The second thing you need to be aware of is that your survival... Your survival will be determined by who you listen to. You hear me? Amen. Your survival will be determined by who you listen to. In other words, who is influencing you? Who are you allowing uh, to be an influencer in your life, uh, amen, to tell you either do it or don't do it, and you're listening uh, to somebody. You say, no, I'm not. I'm deciding all on my own, doing everything. Uh, you're the biggest fool uh, that ever lived. No man lives to himself, and no man dies to himself. Uh, somebody is influencing you today. Uh, somebody is affecting your life. Uh, you are listening to somebody. And it's making it up in your mind. Amen. The Bible said uh, that there are those that will have a form of godliness, uh, but they will deny the power thereof uh, and said from such turn away. If you're going to survive the seduction of the last day, it will only be because you obeyed that Scripture. And you made it up in your mind uh, that you were turning away uh, from evil influencers. Uh -huh. You were turning away uh, from them that wanted to turn you toward worldliness. From them that wanted to turn you toward carnality. From them that wanted to affect your mind uh, and take you down uh, that primsom road uh, with them there. Uh, notice verse 13. Uh, it talks about evil men uh, and seducers working hand in hand. Right. Amen. Uh, I did a little word study. Pardon me for, hope I don't get, uh, amen, too too deep for you with my little shallow mind, but uh, I looked up the word evil that is used there. And it really surprised me to find out that in the New Testament there are two primary words for evil. One word means evil in character. In other words, them are the bad to the bone boys, the bad to the bone girls. You know what I'm talking about. They're evil in character. <laughs> now, if you got a mama that was like my mama, or daddy like my daddy, amen, you didn't have much trouble knowing that you were supposed to stay away from those kind. Oh, oh, I'm telling you, uh, amen, they could get lit up and animated uh, when they saw their son hanging around at all uh, with one of them bad to the bone boys. Uh, my mom and dad, I'm telling you, they could preach a sermon like you never heard in your life. Uh, and hey, I just say, oh God, just to shut him up, uh, I ain't never walking home with him from school again. Uh, I ain't never, uh, amen. Man, they won't ever see me uh, not even saying hi to that girl that looks like Jezebel over there. Because, man, uh, moms and dads know how to steer you around that kind of evil person. And most of the folks I'm preaching here tonight and uh, today, you have learned that lesson very well. Amen. You stay far away from them that are bad in character. But the second word uh, that is used for evil in the New Testament is not evil in character at all, uh, but it means evil in influence. 
I want you to let that settle in. Uh, it, it's not talking about their character. It's not talking about them uh, and the obvious things that are there. Uh, but it's talking about the reason they're evil uh, is they are trying to use influence uh, to get you to do things uh, that you know you should not be doing. Uh, and surprise of all surprises, uh, 11 times in the New Testament, uh, the Bible refers to Satan uh, as being the evil one. Uh, and it is not the one uh, that is bad in character, but it is the one uh, that is bad in influence. Uh, amen. The Almighty God uh, is trying to let us to know uh, that the most dangerous type uh, is not what's obvious, uh, apparent uh, for you to look at, uh, but the evil ones uh, that are trying to influence you uh, and affect you uh, and turn you away uh, from what you've always been taught, uh, from what you've always heard, uh, from what you've always believed, uh, from what's been drilled in your heart. Uh, the Bible said uh, those are the evil men uh, that are doing Satan's business. Uh, those are the evil teenagers uh, that are doing Satan's business, uh, trying their best uh, to pull you away. Oh, hallelujah. 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 They're unhappy to leave on their own. They're determined to take someone with them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what happened with the devil. The Bible said he was Lucifer. <laughs> created uh, perfect. Created uh, with beauty. Amen. Created with all of this. Uh, but he also had influence. Uh, amen. And that evilness inside of him uh, determined uh, that I am not leaving here on my own. Uh, I am going to influence uh, some more of those angels. Uh, I'm going to affect them uh, one way or another. Uh, and one day, uh, the Almighty God gave him the royal boot uh, and said, Get out of here, big boy. Uh, hey, man, you've influenced all uh, that you're going to influence uh, in my holy city. Uh, hey, man, get out of here. You're damned uh, to the regions uh, that are below. Uh, what are you trying to say, Brother White? Uh, we are living in the last days. Uh, hear me, young people. Uh, hey, man, there are uh, an all-out assault uh, by the enemy uh, to try to allow seduction Seduction uh, to come to you uh, through the hands of those uh, that are evil in influence, uh, those that back up on truth, uh, those that backslide away from the faith, uh, and to try to get them uh, to seduce you uh, and mess with your mind uh, and tell you uh, that it can't be all that bad uh, or all these other people going to hell. Uh, is it really like your preachers preaching it? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. A few months back to our house, amen, came a pastor's wife from the East Coast. And I thought it was just going to be a fun visit with my wife. But she quickly let me to know, Brother White, I'd like a little bit of time. Could, while I'm here, I need to talk to you. We sat down, began to talk. This is a pastor's wife. Amen. Good people. They love God, love the doctrine, have always stood. Amen. For everything. Uh, amen. Right. Right on target. Uh, and there we made some time and she's crying, uh, sitting down by the fireplace, crying to me and my wife uh, and saying, I don't know what to do. Uh, it is getting so confusing uh, in these last days. Days. Uh, it, 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 it's so perplexing to my mind. Uh, she said, I look all around uh, and I see preachers and preachers' wives uh, that I've known for many years uh, and they're given in here and they're given in here and they're given in here and their church is now allowing this uh, and now allowing that uh, and it seems like they're prospering uh, and, and they're still, they're not bad people. Uh, they're not bad people, but when I see them, 
them. Uh, amen. They talk to me and say, well, what's the difference between this uh, and this over here? And what's the difference uh, between this and that over there? Uh, and really, this doesn't matter anymore. And that doesn't matter anymore. Uh, and I sat by the hour and tried to talk to her uh, and to, to counterbalance uh, that influence. Uh, let me tell you, that's exactly what the Bible said. Uh, you become an evil person uh, in the hands of the devil. Uh, an evil person uh, when you try to influence uh, somebody away uh, from the rock solid truth uh, of the Word of God. Uh, you become a tool, uh, a seducer, uh, a man in the hands of Satan uh, to affect an influence. Uh, amen. I told that little story. Amen. A couple of months after that, uh, preaching at a convention off in another state. Uh, and uh, I, I knew there wasn't very many people there that probably would have appreciated what I preached about that night. Uh, and so I threw in that little story that I just told you. But after service, uh, the one preacher's wife in the audience, uh, the one that I knew, uh, if there's anybody here that's rock solid, it's her. Uh, and to my utter amazement, uh, after service, she met me on the side, uh, big tears streaming down her cheek. Uh, she said, Brother White, uh, that story you told uh, about that pastor's wife. Uh, she said, I can relate to it. Uh, she said, I'm telling you, uh, it's so confusing uh, in these times that we're living in, uh, trying to figure out, uh, hey amen, will that send you to hell? Uh, will that send you to hell? Uh, is it really a heaven or hell issue? Uh, and she began to break uh, and cry uh, and sob. Uh, let me tell you young people something. Uh, if it's confusing preacher's wives, uh, hey amen, it's got the ability to confuse you. Uh, if it's messing, uh, amen, with those that are involved in the ministry, uh, it's got the power to mess uh, with every saint of God. Uh, no matter how many years you've walked in the truth, uh, God's got to give us some power and some understanding uh, to stand up uh, against the seduction uh, of the last days uh, that we are living in. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> How can we do it, Brother White? Uh, amen. Well, let me tell you what. The, the Bible's very plain. Very plain on how he instructs his people to do uh, with those that are trying uh, to get them to forsake the old paths. The Bible is abundantly clear uh, in giving us instructions. Uh, but our flesh is so weak uh, in knowing and being willing uh, to cut off uh, the evil influences uh, in our life. Uh, because we value friendships uh, sometimes more than we value truth. Can I say it again? Our first loyalty many times, amen, is to friends rather than loyalty to truth. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to be able to identify. Let me tell you, friend, wake up, smell the coffee. People influence other people. And the closer you are to someone, the greater their influence is on you. Can I take it a step further and tell you a person that was once a good influence on you can become a bad influence on you? Well, you just don't understand. They, they've been this and they've been there for me and they've done this and they've done that. And I, I understand breaking away from an influencer can be very difficult. I, I understand that because we all, we all got this this thing about us, uh, that, that it matters to us what other people think. I read of the little experiment that they did with ten young people. And they got ten young people together in a room, and there was a instructor that was up there, and the instructor had three sheets of paper. The three sheets of paper had lines that were drawn of different lengths on them. One was a real short line. The other was a medium-length line. And the third one was a long line. Nine out of the ten young people were taken aside and coached in advance. 
coached and told that we are going to ask the question, which line is the longest line? And when we hold it up, you raise your hand. Now, for you nine, when it's the middle line, we want all of you nine to raise your hand. Even though you know it's not the longest line, all nine of you raise your hand. And we're going to monitor the response of the one person that wasn't tipped off and wasn't informed of what the truth was. Ten of them came in the classroom. The lines were held up. It was, first of all, shown to them and explained. And the instructor said, now when I show, I'll show them all again. When I show the longest line, whichever one is the longest, that's when I want your hands to be raised. We got to the medium-sized line. Nine hands shot up in the air. And the tenth person looked around, looked back up there at the line, and said, maybe I misunderstood him. Maybe that's it. Raise their hand up. The teacher said, now, we're going to do it just one more time. But I want to make sure nobody misunderstood. We're going to do it one more time. We're not asking for the shortest line. We're not asking for the medium line. We're asking for the longest line. Everybody got that clear? Ten heads bobbed up and down. We got it clear. The longest line, that's the one. Don't raise your hand uh, on any other one. When they got to the medium line again, uh, nine hands shot up in the air again. Uh, and that tenth person uh, looked around uh, and was so intimidated uh, about being the oddball uh, and the odd one out uh, that even though their better judgment said it ain't true, uh, it ain't true. It ain't true. Uh, but just to fit in uh, with the rest of the group, uh, hey man, slip their hand up in the air. Uh, hey man, let me tell you, friend, uh, if you're going to stand up uh, to the seduction uh, of these last days, uh, you got to get something in your craw that said, I don't care. Uh, hey man, if 99,000 uh, are saying uh, that it's okay uh, to do this. I know in my heart, and I ain't doing it. There ain't an ounce of truth to it. I ain't going along with them for anything in the world. Hallelujah. But they said... They did the experiment again uh, because they wanted to see if those people uh, were just that emotionally weak or what the deal is. Uh, but when they got them in a group uh, where the rest of the group uh, was answering correctly, uh, they were then brave enough uh, to answer correctly. Uh, let me tell you, friend, uh, that's why evil men and seducers uh, are going to wax worse and worse uh, in the end time uh, because there's not a lot of people uh, that got enough of what it takes uh, inside of them uh, that can look around uh, and say, I don't care what church says it's okay. Uh, I don't care what youth group says it's okay. Uh, I don't care who uh, said it's all right. Uh, amen. I'm sticking by the Bible. Uh, I'm sticking by the Word of God. Uh, I'm doing what the Word says. But you won't do it for long, my friend, if you're not willing to break away from the influencer. You know, a lot of young people, pardon me, I, I guess I'm just talking about my local church where I'm at, uh, but I've watched a lot of young people, amen, how one person gets carnal and starts to backslide and how they have such a hard time cutting off that person. They have such a difficult time realizing that that influence is going to pull you down. 
It's going to pull you down. Amen. All your good efforts of trying to pull them up. It's going to end up pulling you down. Amen. It's going to happen just as sure as the world. And you try to explain to them and show them scriptures in the Bible where in the New Testament, Paul said, don't keep company. Uh Amen. Yeah, be nice, be friendly, uh, but you better stop fellowshipping uh, with an evil influencer. Uh, You better start fellowshipping uh, with somebody that's pulling one way, uh, trying to get you to go that way. Uh, And and there are people that struggle with that and say, well, that was just Paul and that was just a problem that there was in that church. I, I dare you to do a study of the Word of God. Just look up the times in the Bible that the Bible uses the term, amen, cut off from among the people. I challenge you, uh, get your nose in that Bible uh, and you will find out, uh, hey man, there was, there was precious little in the Bible uh, of the pastor having to disfellowship somebody. Uh, hey man, when it got to that extreme, uh, it was because the saints wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing uh, and cutting them off uh, a long time before it got there. Yeah, read it. Uh, the Old Testament, Exodus 12. Uh, if somebody was just, uh, amen, eating leaven when they wasn't supposed to be eating leaven, uh, he said they shall be cut off uh, from among the people. Uh, you make it up in your mind, uh, amen, if they're partaking of things uh, that they're not supposed to be partaking of, uh, if they're going to the movies, uh, amen, if they're slipping off somewhere uh, and watching videos, uh, amen, the Bible said, uh, you don't wait till the pastor gets up uh, and gets red-faced about it. You just snip it off and say, uh-uh, I'm cutting you off from among my fellowship. Why? I don't want Hollywood damning my soul. I don't want it affecting my spirit. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 30. Amen. It talks about if anybody gets the bright idea that they can tinker with the formula concerning the anointing oil. It didn't say give them a good long Bible study and be patient with them and loving with them because they're your brother and they're this and they're that. And the, uh, the Bible said cut them off from among the people. Huh. They get to tinkering with that formula at all. Well, I might as well step out into deep water here. Shouldn't I? Is that anybody anybody got a life preserver for me out there? I dare you to find me one place in the Bible. One place in the Bible where a man ever predicted in advance how many people were going to get the Holy Ghost at a certain place or time. Mm -hmm. You tell me one place. I know 3,000 got it on the day of Pentecost. uh, But it wasn't because uh, Peter got up there and predicted that 3,000 were going to get it on the day of Pentecost. I dare say there's some folks uh, tinkering with the formula of the anointed oil. uh, When you think you can control uh, how many is going to get it uh, at any one time, uh, place, uh, or set of circumstances. Uh, I'm telling you, let God be God. Uh, Yeah, we want as many as possible uh, to get the Holy Ghost. uh, But no man controls that. Uh, No woman controls that. Uh, Amen. Those that mess with... With the anointing oil. Cut them off. Cut them off. Cut them off. Oh, are you reading from the same Bible I'm reading with? Amen. Uh, do you understand that's part of the seducing spirits uh, of the last days that we're living in? Leviticus 7, he said, hey, if they're eating or touching unclean things, don't even matter that they didn't eat it if they're just touching unclean things. And they're bowed up in rebellion against God and determined they're going to do it. He said, you, the saints, cut them off from among the people. Oh, hallelujah. Leviticus 17. He said, those that are trying to have church without going to God's house to have church. 
He said, cut them off from among the people. Ah, oh, I'm making enemies here. I'm making enemies. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That kind of sounds like cell groups, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Look it up in your Bible. Amen. Those that are trying to have church without going to God's house to have church. You say, are you against us having a little prayer meeting in our home? No. Are you against teaching a Bible study in the home? No, 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 no. But this nonsense, uh, amen, that it's too far. It's too much trouble. Our people are too busy. Uh, they got a whole lot of things going on. Uh, so we don't have midweek Bible studies anymore. Uh, we just break up into small groups uh, and everybody just meets at their homes uh, and takes care of business that way. Uh, and then we all come back together here uh, to meet together on Sunday so we can collect the tithe uh, and the offering uh, and get all of that in. Let me tell you, friend, you need to go back to this book. Uh, you need to go back to the Bible. Uh, the Bible said when you want to have church, uh, you go to God's house to have church. Uh, you go to the house of God. Uh, amen. You get together with God's people uh, and magnify and praise Him there. Say, Brother White, what are you all worried about that for? Is that all a big deal? Yeah. I was, I was blown away a couple of weeks ago. I opened Popular Magazine, Focus on the Family. Amen. The article starts off with a question about what can a dad do? My children don't want to go to church with me anymore. It's too boring. It's too dead, too dull, dry, whatever all the words of description were. And the answer came back with flowing terms that if a father really knows how to do it, he can make interesting the Word of God at home. He can teach his children the Bible stories. He can teach them all about it. Be the priest of his own home and have a great time there. Now, I'm not against family altars and family devotions and all of that stuff. But I read that article and I read through the whole magazine. I thought, God, I can't believe this. We are at the day when the parachurch ministries and organizations are no longer pointing the people to church. No longer pointing the people that you've got. To, hey, if your church is dead, dull, and boring, find a Holy Ghost filled uh, church that's full of power, full of the glory of God, uh, full of the anointing of God. Uh, get them out of the refrigerator uh, into the fire uh, where God's blessings can be. Uh, amen. If you want it, uh, you've got to go to God's house. Uh, amen. Let me tell you, friend, uh, it's a bunch of nonsense uh, of the seducing spirits of the last day uh, that say you can stay home uh, and have church in your home. Uh, that's not in this book. Uh, and the Bible said, uh, when they start doing that, uh, you cut them off. You cut them off. You're not going to influence me toward forsaking the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, how did I get off on all this? Be seated. Hallelujah. Leviticus 23, he said, if they're violating the rules of the day of atonement, cut them off. Oh, but we're supposed to be the people of love, 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 love. Oh, we're supposed to be all of this. What's all this cutting off? It didn't say be belligerent. It didn't say amen. Uh, that, that you're to yell and scream and rail on him. It just said take the snips. Say we're through with that fellowship. We're through being around that kind of a person. 
Amen. That's the last time they'll be over our house for refreshments. Uh, they ain't never coming over here again. Why? Because they're taken after their father, the devil. They're evil in influence. Uh, they're evil in influence. Uh, brother, something needs to get in your heart. Uh, young person uh, that said the very first time, uh, I hear another person in the youth group uh, start bagging on my pastor. Uh, I cut them off. Uh, the very first time. Uh, hey, man, I hear another young person uh, saying, what's so bad about this? Uh, I cut them off. Uh, the very first time uh, somebody tries to steer me down the road, uh, I say, you ain't seducing me. Uh-uh. You're not seducing me. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the third thing that I want to conclude with here today is that caving in to sexual seduction produces a lifetime of pain. Amen. Part of the seduction of the last days has to do with doctrines, teachings, beliefs, standings for what's right and what's not right. But part of it has to do with the onslaught of sexual stimulation that is in our world today to a degree it has never been before. I got two single boys, both above the age of 18. I cringe when I see the billboards they have to look at every day. I cringe when I see the world that's around them. The level of the conversation and the slogans, everything has sexual overtures to it. Everything that comes uh, down the pike. Uh, but I'm here to talk to you young people, to tell you uh, that caving in to the sexual seduction of this age produces a lifetime of pain. Let me talk to you real serious, young people. Let me tell you, I understand that it's difficult, man, to get sexual matters and your craving for intimacy all sorted out when you're a young person. It's hard for you to distinguish and differentiate between the two. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, there is a big difference between the two. You were born with a deep desire in you that desires true intimacy with another human being of the opposite sex. You were born with that longing deep inside of you that said, God, it's not a physical thing necessarily, but I want a companion that I can be true to for a lifetime. I want a companion that can be true to me for a lifetime. That we can have a closeness, a bond. Uh, that we can be uh, brought together with a true intimacy. That in the years to come, we can drive down... It. But when you're a Pentecostal teenager, it's so easy to get them all bundled up together and think sex uh, equals true intimacy. Uh, I'm telling you, it doesn't uh, whatsoever. We get things all in our mind. We say, uh, well, I, I, I'm just kind of naive, but I think I know it all. I like the little story that I heard. Some of you moms and daddies need to cover your ears right now. You might think it's a little too stout for you, but amen. The young people can handle it. We'll get through it. A little six-year-old boy came to his dad and he asked his dad, he said, Dad, how are babies made? Of course, the dad looked at a six-year-old boy, amen, and thought, oh, oh, son, you're just way too young for, amen, any of that, to explain any of that. So he said, son, it's just God. It's God. Six-year-old boy looked at him. He said, yeah, yeah, Dad, I know it's God, but how does God do it? He said, well, son, he said, go ask your mother. <laughs> he said, no, 
No, Dad. He said, uh, I want to find out from you. How, how does God do that? So his dad, you know, he, they lived out in the country, and he walked over to a corn stalk there, and he broke off uh, an ear of corn. He said, uh, well, it's kind of like this, son. And he took the ear of corn, and with the ear of corn, he said, you see this uh, ear of corn that's here? He said, it's just one of these kernels from off of this corn gets planted down in the soil, and the seed gets planted there, and then it grows up to be a corn stalk. He said, that's, that's how God does it, making babies. And the boy thought, cool, Dad, that's real cool. Amen. Dad went on his way, and the boy decided that Dad's gone. He said, I, I'm going to try to make a baby. So he took one of those kernels of that corn there, and he went out in the field, and he started looking, and the ground was hard, and he couldn't find a place to plant it. And he tried, and finally he just said, you know what? He said, here's a rock. I'll just lay it here and put this rock over the top of it. And so he did. Instead of trying to break through the hard dirt, he just put it and covering it up is all that matters. And he put it underneath that rock there. And the boy took off back to the house and forgot about it for a few days. And one day he remembered it. And he went running back out there. And he reached underneath that rock. And he pulled that rock aside. And there was a little baby toad frog that was underneath that rock and his kernel of corn was gone. In utter amazement, he picked up that little toad frog <laughs> and he said, you are the ugliest little booger that I have ever seen, but I sure am proud to be your daddy. Say uh, you're insulting our intelligence. We're teenagers. Uh, amen. We're we're way more educated than that. Uh, you might be uh, with the classroom and the street lingo, uh, but you're ever bit that naive uh, when it comes to the difference uh, between true intimacy, uh, amen, and sexual gymnastics uh, without a clue of an understanding, uh, amen. When you get to that age of a teenager uh, and the hormonal desires uh, that are there inside of you uh, saying that's what I want uh, that's what I want no uh, you're really wanting intimacy uh, but you're looking for it uh, in the wrong ways uh, you're looking for it uh, in the wrong opportunities that were there uh, it's real true intimacy uh, that you really are craving uh, look at the story in the Garden of Eden uh, I've read that story over and over again uh, and I thought, oh God, I wish I had the chance to make the choice that Adam made. I wish I had the chance to make the choice that Eve made in the garden to determine, to determine what the end of the journey was going to be. Let me tell you, look at that story in the Garden of Eden. Amen. The punishment for them disobeying God's law was now the thing uh, that would have come the easiest. Uh, the food off of the tree uh, was what was the easiest. You just went and plucked it uh, and ate it. Uh, but God's punishment for disobedience uh, is what would have come the easiest. Uh, now comes the hardest for you. Uh, it's the sweat of your brow. Uh, it's thorns and it's thistles uh, and it's hard work. Uh, let me tell you, young person, uh, every Pentecostal young person gets a chance to say no to the serpent who is forever waiting in the wings. You get your chance to be an Adam. You get your chance to be an Eve because the serpent comes along. Amen. And what God intended to come the easiest, that if you would hold and save and reserve your body until marriage, that true intimacy could really come easy. But because you choose, to disobey God's law and violate it. 
it. And then you get married. And the intimacy that you were longing for just isn't there. And you work at it. You sweat at it. You toil for it. You fight for it. Every inch, every day of your life. Caving in to sexual seduction produces a lifetime of pain. Brother White, what if I've already messed up? I've already committed fornication. I've already, I've already, I've already. Amen. Let me tell you, friend, you could have made it a lot easier on yourself by making it up in your mind that I am going to be obedient to God. I know the serpent's there. I know his seduction is offering me an easy road. But sexual violations turn true intimacy into something that is very difficult to obtain from that point on. I close this morning. Someone comes to the music. Standing up to the seduction of the last days. You're going to have to cut off the evil influencers of your life. You're going to have to recognize that those seducers are into deception. You don't want to go that way. You don't want to end up down that trail. You want to have the favor and the blessings of God upon you. Would you stand with me together? Amen. I wonder how many young people there are. Amen. This Tuesday morning of this camp. They'd be willing to step out the aisle. Say, Brother White, I don't want to cave in to the seduction of the end time. Next year at this camp, I don't want people looking around and saying, where is she? Where is he? Oh, they, they're cutting their hair now saying there's nothing wrong with it. He moved in with his girlfriend saying nothing's wrong with it. They've gone off and got involved in another church saying nothing's wrong with it. All along. You don't want to cave in to the seduction of the end time. Seduction of the last days. You don't want to take your body that's the precious temple of God. And in a moment of passion, give in to something that's going to make true intimacy a hard, hard task. For the rest of your life. You want to stand up to the seduction. Of the last days. With your mind made up. I'm going to obey God's word. I'm going to live it. According to the word of God. And I am cutting off from my life. Anybody. That would try to influence me. Away. From the old path. That's your only way, young person, to make it through the powerful seduction of this last hour. I wonder if you'd be willing to come up around this altar, find a place to pray, make that consecration to God today. Lead us in a chorus of worship. Come on. Come on, young ladies. Come on, young men. Come on. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse. Though the world may pass. Those that have a form of godliness go their way. But deny the power thereof. From such, turn away. From such, turn away. Oh, let's sing it under here. Oh, just to walk with Him means everything 
to me. To me. Come on, young people. Just come on. to come on. His come on. hand is leading me. Come on, young men. Come on, young ladies. All the world Make a consecration to God. Make a dedication to God. All the way. Oh, God. Me be From the seducer. Just to walk I'm going to turn away with him. From those that are evil in influence. To me. Talk against what I believe. Mark against us. To the things that they want to do with him. Oh, that's it. everything that's it to me. I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna stand. Just I'm gonna stand. To oh, God, He's near. Oh, His yes. Hand is leading me. Oh, yes. Yes. Though the world yes, Lord. may pass. Yes, Lord. I Go away and let's my friends don't want to go. I'm willing to turn away from them. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. My first loyalty is the truth. My first loyalty is to the Word of God. Oh, that's it. That's it. To me. Oh, yes. Yes, oh yes, His hand yes. is Hallelujah. Need to make a commitment to God. Need to make some vows to God. The world I don't want to make the same mistake Adam did in the garden. I don't want to make the same mistake he did in the garden. Oh God, oh God, it's everywhere. The world, the world saturated with seduction. But oh God, oh God, oh God, not going to cave in to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, just hallelujah. He's oh yeah, his hand is Though the world may pass me by, go the way and let me be. Praise God. Let's worship Him tonight, this morning. Let's worship Him. Let's call on Him. Let's talk to the Lord for a little while this morning. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, touch us, Father. Move on our hearts today, Lord. Anoint us, O oh God, with your word and your spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 My God, my God. My God, in your name, touch us today, Lord. Move, we pray, in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God in your name, my God in your name, my God in your name. Move this morning, Lord. Talk to us, God. Oh, the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Their way. Their way. Let me be. Just to walk with Him means everything. To walk with him means everything to me.
just to know his nail pierced hand is leading me. Though the world pass me by, go their way, let me be just to walk with him. Everything to me Just to walk with Him Means everything to me Just to know His nail Your hands are Oh!